Hi, welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about EMSRB. M -E -M -S -R -B. So in the last three videos, we went through the calculations for EMSRA, and then at the end, we noted that there are actually two versions of EMSRA and B. EMSRB was developed to address an issue that was discovered with EMSRA. In some cases, EMSRA can result in protection levels that are larger than the optimal solution. So they're higher than they should be if we're trying to maximize revenue. The reason that occurs comes from the way we are aggregating the protection levels for individual pairs of fair classes to come up with the one protection level for this set of fair classes. So if you view those earlier videos, you'll know that we really were after this protection level here. So we are the the solution we got to with EMSRA was that we should protect 109 seats for fair classes three, two, and one together so that those seats are not sold to customers who are only willing to pay $125. The way we got to that 109 is we found protection levels between different pairs of fair classes, four to three, four to two, and four to one. EMSRB takes a different approach to getting to the same answer. So instead of calculating individual protection levels and then aggregating those protection levels, it first aggregates the demand and then calculates one protection level for the pool of demand for these three fair classes. So instead of calculating individual protection levels, it calculates only one protection level using Littlewood's rule for, in this case, fair class four against this pool of fair classes. And the intuition or the rationale behind this approach is as follows. Let's say that all three of these fares were the same. Let's make them all 290. So fair classes one, two, and three are 290. Well, if this was the case, then it would make sense that instead of calculating three different protection levels and adding them together, we would calculate one protection level for the $290 fare, because there's really not three different fares anymore. There are, there's really one fare with three different demand forecasts. So we would prefer to calculate one protection level for this fare level by aggregating this demand together and then using Littlewood's rule to protect seats for the $290 fare against $125 customers. Well, that's not what EMSRA does. It calculates three different protection levels and adds them together. And when you do that, you tend to get a higher answer here than if you just calculated one protection level by aggregating the demand together for uh, this fare. Now, of course, in reality, this doesn't happen. The fares are different, but you can use that same approach. So now, if you had three different fares, the way you would aggregate them together is you would take a weighted average, so you'd weight these fares by the demand and get one fare for this uh, new sort of temporary fare class, and then aggregate the demand statistics together, and I'll show you how to do that. And then you would have one fare value, one mean and standard deviation that represents the demand for all three of these classes, and you would calculate a protection level for that set of fair classes against uh, fair class four at $125, and that would be our uh, EMSRB answer down here. So the way we're gonna do this is I've created another table. So I've condensed some of the information into a new table. I've taken our EMSR protection levels and just written them in this column here and this is our old information, our fares and demand statistics. And then on this side, we're going to calculate our weighted averages and then aggregate our demand statistics together so that we can calculate EMSRB protection levels. 
Now, I'm not going to try to create a lot of notation and subscripts here because it just gets too messy and confusing. So just stay with me here. When I when we calculate this weighted average, it's going to be for classes 3, 2, and 1. This weighted average will be for 2 and 1, and then this average will just be this fair. So let's start with our weighted averages. Uh, well, we'll start with this. We'll start with this column. We'll calculate our weighted average for uh, fair class 3. So the way we get this weighted average is we simply take the fair times the demand. So it'll be, see if I can write this quick. So I pause to write this out because my handwriting just falls apart when I have to write fast on this tablet. So I just multiplied my fair times my uh, demand. Uh, so 500 times 16.5 is 82.50 plus 420 times 44.2 and so on. I've added those together and that's going to be my numerator. Now I'm going to sum my demands. So 16.5 plus 44.2 plus 35.1. I'll go get my calculator. So that's 95.8. So we'll write here uh, the sum of the mu's, mu's of j equals 95.8. And in fact, we need that. That's our average demand. So we will write that one right here, 95.8. And then our weighted average is going, our weighted average fair is going to be 36993 over 95.8. Make sure this is visible on the screen here. So our weighted average fare is $386.15, and we can write that right here, 386.15. Now we have the weighted average fare for these three classes. We need to combine the demand statistics so that we get one set of parameters that represent the demand for the combined classes. Because we are assuming that demand follows, follows the normal distribution and that the demand for each of these classes is independent from each other, the way you get the aggregate average demand is by simply adding together the averages for the three classes. So we added these three mu's together, we get the new, uh, the new mean. For the standard deviation, it's just a little bit more, a uh, little bit more work. You can't add the standard deviations, but you can add the variances. So what we'll do is we will take these sigmas, we'll square them to get the variances, then we'll sum the variances and take the square root of that sum, and that will be our aggregate standard deviation. So I've written this out for us. So I've taken each of the standard deviations and squared them. Uh, 5.6 squared is 31.36, uh, 225, etc. Add those variances together, you get 381. And now we'll take the square root of the sum of variances and we'll get the standard deviation, which is 19.5. 19.5, and we'll write that right here. So our aggregated demand statistics are now in a mean of 95.8 and a standard deviation of 19.5. Well now we have everything we need to calculate the EMSRB protection level. We can take the uh, new fair and excuse me, the new fair and demand parameters and the um, the fair we're going to protect against and use our EMSR spreadsheet to come up with a protection level. This is the same spreadsheet we used in the previous videos. So we have FAIR 4, which is $125, and then I just copied over the um, uh, parameters we just calculated. So the average FAIR for classes 1 through 3, and then the mean and standard deviation. And then we use our procedure that is familiar by now. We look for the EMSR, the expected marginal seat revenue, that equals 125, and it's right about here. So our theta, our protection level, that makes the expected marginal seat revenue equal to the fare we could get from 
selling the seats to fair class four is 105 seats. So we'll write our EMSR B protection level right here. And now we can compare the EMSR A protection level with the EMSR B protection level. And in fact, as we said, sometimes EMSR A results in a higher protection level than EMSR B. And in this case, uh, EMSR A would protect four more seats than EMSR B for this set of classes. So I think we've spent enough time practicing these calculations. So I'm going to just go and pause and fill the rest of these boxes in. So here is the EMSRB protection level for classes 1 and 2 against the $290 fare. So one thing to note that when I calculated, uh, when I used these parameters for classes 1 and 2, I still use this fare to find the protection level. So I'm not, I'm not taking this set and, ca and comparing it to this fare. I'm comparing this 441 to this fare to get this protection level. So this 441.75 is the weighted average of 5420 with these uh, demand for uh, using this demand as the weighting. Uh, the sum of the means is the aggregate mu and then I calculated the uh, aggregate uh, standard deviation using the method before by squaring the va variances, summing them together and then taking the square root. And notice here that in fact the EMSRB protection level in this case is a little bit higher than the EMSRA protection level. So uh, it doesn't, uh, EMSRB doesn't always result in a lower protection level. The protection level for the first fair class for EMSRA and EMSRB is always going to be the same, so I didn't need to calculate any new parameters because there is no, there's nothing to aggregate together, right? There's only one fare here. Now that we know how to calculate protection levels using both versions of EMSR, which one is better? Well, that is a difficult question to answer. Airlines use both EMSRA and EMSRB. EMSRB is probably more widely used, but EMSRA is still preferred by some airlines. The way they get to that decision is either from experience of having one of the algorithms implemented and then making a choice to choose to, uh, to move to the other for one reason or another, or they might perform simulations um, on both algorithms and see which one results in the greatest revenue. In experiments, both EMSRA and EMSRB result in very close to the optimal revenue. Both of these models are extremely effective, and that's why they're so widely used. They're easy to understand, they're easy to implement, and they both perform very well in practice. So thank you for watching these videos on EMSR. This is a continuation of the series on optimization models. In the next video, we're going to move beyond EMSR, and we're going to look at some other approaches, probably go and take a look at the network models. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.